So we have various different teams working here in the Mission Control Center. This is the Flight Directorate, headed up by Stefan Israel, the chairman and CEO of Ariane Space. This is Ariane Space top management. They are the highest technical authority for launch operations. And these guys have the final say in the case of any unplanned situations and teams working across the base report directly to them. Now, LISA Pathfinder is a very, very important program for the European Space Agency. It's called a technology demonstrator and it's testing technology for a future mission to detect gravitational waves. Over now to the Director General of the European Space Agency, Jan Werner. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen in Kourou. Unfortunately, I cannot be with you this time. Also, this mission is a very special mission and is inspiring me very much. LISA Pathfinder the precursor of LISA, and I hope that we will have LISA also in the near future. LISA Pathfinder is there to show a technology which should finally discover and uh, evaluate the effect of gravitational waves in the universe, going back to Einstein's theory. At the same time, when we have this very inspiring scientific missions, and I'm sure the scientists will explain it later on in detail, we have the Werther launch, the six out of, a, of the Werther launch with Vega. Vega, our smallest child of the European launch family. So therefore we have both. We have the Vega launch and we have Lisa Pathfinder, both inspiring moments of ESA as being a European space agency, not only for benefit of citizens in the day-to-day -day work, but also for inspiration for the future. Jan Werner there, the Director General of the European Space Agency. Well, it was 100 years ago yesterday that Albert Einstein published a paper that would revolutionize the way we think about our universe. It was, of course, the uh, theory of relativity. In it, he made a number of predictions, and unbelievably, over the 100 years, we've discovered they were all true. Quite an incredible brain. But there's one that we haven't yet been able to verify, and that is the existence of gravitational waves. He called them ripples in the fabric of space-time. Well, Lisa Pathfinder is the first step in our quest to discover those gravitational waves. And uh, joining me to tell us more about it is the Director of Science, Alvaro Jimenez. Thank you very much indeed for coming to the floor. Thank you. What's Lisa Pathfinder going to do? Well, it's, uh, as you said, uh, LISA Pathfinder is going to be the first step toward our understanding of the universe in gravitational waves, to observe gravitational waves and try to know more about our universe. And uh, I have to say, for centuries, we have been observing the universe in uh, uh, visual uh, light, in a very narrow area of the electromagnetic spectrum and with that we made a picture of what we know of the universe like having a picture in black and white then with the space we managed to get observations of the universe in infrared x-ray gamma rays so we got the picture of the movie in color now with Lisa Pathfinder we are opening the way to get sound in this movie because we will listen to this uh, ripples, these variations in the space-time that gives us information totally in a different, totally uh, way about how masses move and behave in the universe. So it's a little bit like putting a microphone onto the universe. Yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, Lisa Pathfinder is, of course, a very important mission, but it's one of a number of fantastic missions that the European Space Agency has under its Cosmic Vision program. Tell us a little bit about those. Well, we are having in a science program a number of missions, and we have three essential objectives. The first one is to understand our neighborhood our solar system and we do that with missions like Rosetta understanding comets but also missions that we are preparing to go to Mercury missions we have around Mars or uh, new missions that, that we are developing to go to the icy moons of Jupiter 
The second objective is to understand the universe, to see stars, galaxies, cosmology, how it all behaves, how it evolves. Looking, for example, it, uh, we are preparing a mission to look for the nature of dark energy, to understand this element, this component of the universe that is so, so enigmatic still. And the third, and that is a very important objective also, is to understand the laws of physics that underpin the whole behavior of the universe. And these laws of physics include, of course, gravity, which is the dominant part in the evolution of the universe. And Lisa Pathfinder is actually finding the way to get this information about these uh, laws of physics. And I think it's fair to say, Alvaro, that uh, some people have, been, have spent their entire professional lives working on this mission. So today is a truly a big day. It is indeed a, a, a big date, and I, I think it is so great to see that we have now this uh, here ready for launch. And it is a big development that, in my view, put together two elements. It's the creativity and the ideas of the scientific community, the scientists involved, together with engineers that make them feasible, that make them true. And how you make true the dreams of the scientists is a teamwork of engineers and scientists together to achieve things like this one we are going to witness today. Let's find out now, thank you very much indeed, about the launch campaign and the preparations for today. Coming from Italy, the Vega stages arrived in French Guiana last July on board Toucan on Colibri. Most elements were transferred to the Vega launch pad after being prepared in their respective integration buildings. First to be erected was the P-80 stage after it had been filled with solid propellant in September. The Zephyro stages were added in October, Zephyro 23 and then Zephyro 9. Finally, Avum was mated on top of the other Vega stages end October. Lisa Pathfinder spacecraft landed at Felix Ewe Airport on the 8th of October. Mechanical and electrical checks were performed during one month on both the propulsion module and the scientific module. The spacecraft was fueled with propellant early November and then Lisa Pathfinder was ready to start the combined operations with the launcher. At D-3, the dress rehearsal took place with the range, the launcher and Lisa Pathfinder and with all the tracking stations involved. On D-1, after final checks, the launch readiness review gave the final go to enter into the launch countdown. This mission was demanding in terms of performance, and that's why we had to design and optimize the trajectory in order to, to get the maximum performance for, the, for this mission. And to do this, we had to implement two boosts of the upper stage, of the Avum stage, in order to reach the performance that was asked for, for this mission. So the first part of the mission, the PAT, the Z23, Z9, and first boost of Avum, the upper stage, is a standard process which will be followed by Galio station, which is the present station here, Natal in Brazil, Ascension in the Atlantic Ocean, and then Libreville and Malindi, which are in Africa. So after the end of the first boost of Avum, we have a ballistic phase, which lasts about uh, one hour, during which the launcher is placed in a barbecue mode in order to limit the thermal effect of the sun exposition. And then we have the second boost of the Avum over Panama, uh, which will be followed uh, by uh, the SNA, which is a naval uh, station on the sea, in the Caribbean Sea. Then we have a short ballistic phase before the separation of the Lysa Pathfinder. So this separation will be followed by this present station after a complete turn around, around the Earth, and also by the Diane station, which is a uh, used by ESA 
to follow the first maneuvers of Liza Passwinder after the separation. And then we have this, the third boost of Aboom, which occurs after the separation of uh, Lisa Passwinder and uh, is dedicated to limit the lifetime of the upper stage in orbit after the end of the mission. À tous de DDO. Attention pour la séquence finale lanceur. Top. HCRO moins 4 minutes. And we have the range operations manager there has just announced the beginning of the synchronized sequence, the last four minutes during which the computers are controlling all the final operations in the countdown. Well, I'm joined in the commentary box by Dr. Paul McNamara. Paul is the project uh, scientist for Lisa Pathfinder. Paul, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, Paul, what is a project scientist? So the project scientist is, uh, or my role is to manage the science of the mission. So I work both with the engineering team who are building the hardware and with the science team who are actually going to start using it when we launch. Well, we're very lucky to have you because you're an expert on gravity um, and the nature of the universe. And uh, you've spent many, many years working on this. So yes. thank you very much. Um, we've uh, been looking at mission control, but we do have other launch control, other control centers. As I said earlier, this is launch control. There are several teams working in here. One is responsible for all the operations on the ground. Uh, they coordinate with mission control for the final authorization to launch. I should say that these teams are involved solely with the launcher and their quality team ensures that they follow procedures correctly. And one of the other teams we have in here are responsible for the flight readiness of the launch vehicle. Uh, they oversee all the operations from assembly of the launcher all the way through to the actual launch itself. And their quality assurance team, they ensure that everyone adheres to the procedures which are put in place. And we have another team, which is the health, safety and environment team, uh, which makes sure that all the operations are carried out according to very strict rules, guaranteeing the utmost safety at the base. And those guys and girls are about three kilometres from this pad in a protected bunker. Right, Paul, you have spent... Uh, nearly 20 years, I believe. Just work, a bit more than that, yes. <laughs> working on this, so I think it's about time you went outside to watch your launch. So off you go to the viewing station and Thank you can you. tell us all about it. Will do. One minute and 40 seconds to launch. Vega is standing tall there on the pad. A few other important people here in Mission Control. This is Jean-Christophe Delaunay, he's the mission director and uh, he coordinates the day-to-day -day activities at the launch pad. And then we have the range operations manager who you saw earlier, John Ha, or Jon, he's Norwegian and he's in charge of coordinating the launch base systems during the final countdown. Attention for HCRO moins une minute. We're going to be hearing his voice throughout the flight. Top, HCRO moins une minute. We are one minute to launch. We are orbiting the trailblazing gravity hunter Lisa Pathfinder for the European Space Agency. Our very best wishes to all the teams at ESA, to the Industrial Consortium led by Airbus Defence and Space, and of course to everybody in ESA's control centre, ESOC, who are waiting to take charge of their spacecraft. Our very best wishes and good luck as we watch the launch. À tous de DDO. Attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Top. Allumage et décollage de VV06. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. And there she goes. We are off. Vega lit up the light night sky there momentarily as it uh, 
disappeared behind the clouds, heading up over the Amazon rainforest and uh, heading out over the Atlantic Ocean. Par la station télémesure de Saint -Georges. Here on the equatorial coast of South America, we're now heading east towards Africa. And Lisa Pathfinder has started her journey. Vega is powering its way across the sky using the first stage there. And we can hear the sound as it arrives here at the, Garnes, the uh, Mission Control Center. He's telling us that everybody, everything is going according to plan. And we can hear it rumbling across the sky. We're uh, burning the P-80 first stage here. 80 is the mass of the propellant, 89 tons. And the first three stages are the propulsion phase, getting us away from the gravity of the Earth. Gravity, of course, being the very thing that Lisa Pathfinder is going to be helping us to investigate. On the bottom of the screen, you can see on the left-hand side is our altitude, 47, 48 kilometers. He says everything's normal. The distance from the pad and the bottom right-hand side is our speed in kilometers per second. So we've lost the P-80 first stage. It's burnt its propellant. We don't need it anymore. It's fallen away and we are shedding weight. We've ignited the Z-23 second stage. That's going to burn for about one minute and 30 seconds. Z means Zafiro, which is Italian for a type of wind, like the Sirocco or the Mistral. And of course, 23 is the amount of solid propellant that is contained inside the tank. It burns 23 tons of propellant in one and a half minutes. You can see the fairing is the nose of the vehicle. If you look at that image there on the right-hand side of the screen, that CGI image of, of what's happening in space, the fairing is the nose. You've got a good look at it there of the vehicle, the pointy bit at the front. That's protecting our satellites from the rigors of the launch, notably the acoustic vibrations at liftoff. Very loud, you can just imagine. And, of course, friction, because we are flying through the dense part of the atmosphere right now. That's about 120 kilometers thick. Du Z23. And we're coming to the edge of it now. We've lost the Z23 engine. And we're about to switch on the Z9. Allumage de l'étage Z9. There we go. And Paul. Separation de la coiffe. Just come back, Paul. We've lost the fairing. We don't need that anymore. You saw the launch, and now you can see your baby for the first time exposed to space. How are you feeling? Um, it's hard to put words into it. When you see that light up and it just starts to rise into the air, knowing that our little satellite is sitting in there is just unbelievable. Uh, you've worked hard for this for many years. It's fantastic. We're, just everybody look at the right-hand side of the screen. You can see the satellite there with a flat section at the front. Paul, can you uh, just explain to us what we're looking at? Sure. The flat part we're looking at there is the solar array. That's how we generate all the power on a satellite. Being in space, the only way to get power is from uh, the sunlight. Uh, and now what we can see is just a bit underneath the solar array is the gold part is our uh, spacecraft itself. That is Lisa Pathfinder. It's so a this nicer is the, picture now. To the left, if you like. To the left of the, the top part, the flat part. And the part under the gold part that looks like it's wrapped up in aluminium foil, that is our engine we use to get us out to our final orbit uh, towards the sun, towards uh, uh, 1.5 million kilometres from Earth. And then to the left of that, you could see... The upper stage there um, and the uh, the Vega launcher. So this was five minutes and 17 seconds ago. Uh, Paul, what was it like? It went behind the clouds pretty quickly? 
It still, we saw glimpses of it as it was going up there. Uh, it felt like I was back in Scotland with all the clouds all over the place. But even still, it was still amazing just to see that whole, that bit there where it just lights up the sky. It's phenomenal. It's quite something. And of course, Vega flies very quickly compared to some of the larger launchers. So people who are used to seeing uh, the Ariane launcher take off, that is a lot heavier, of course. So it's a, it's a slower it moment. It's a slower so here we go. We are five minutes now. Uh, five, coming up to six minutes into the launch and we're uh, switching off the Z9 engine. Don't need that anymore. Uh, Lisa Pathfinder at the front there on its journey. It's quite a revolutionary. OK, so we've picked up the signal at the tracking station in Natal. That's on the northeastern coast of Brazil. You can see our flight path there taking us out across the Atlantic. Uh, yeah, I was just saying it's a quite a... Z9. And there we go. We've lost the, uh, the uh, Z9 engine there. So uh, we're coming up now to the uh, to the next phase in the in the flight. Um, the main propulsion phase is over. We've got ourselves away from the gravity of the Earth, and we're going to start the next phase, which is de la avant le boost à boom. to drop off uh, the satellite in the correct position. And here you can see that the Avum upper stage is starting an orientation phase. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. I was uh, attempting to talk about Lisa Pathfinder there. She's quite revolutionary, isn't she? Yeah, Lisa Pathfinder is the first step of observing the universe in a whole new way. It's not using light, it's Terre using gravity. De la lanceur par la station de Saint -Georges. So Lisa Pathfinder is essentially a physics lab in space, allowing us to test the technology. Sorry, it's allowing us to test the technology required to build a large gravitational wave detector in the future. And um, the, we've just switched on the engine of the Avum upper stage. Uh, Paul and I say Avum because we're Brits, but um, a lot of Europeans and French uh, in particular who, uh, who, are who are in control of this particular launcher are calling it the Avum. Yes. Fin de visibilité du lanceur par la station de Galio. And we picked up the uh, signal there at the Galio tracking station that is at the Ghana Space Centre. So Lisa Pathfinder is um, heading off to a position in space which is one point, f well, one and a half million kilometres yes. uh, above the Earth. And the Avum's job is to take it there. It's going to take two months to get there. Um, it's, it's really blazing a trail, isn't it, Lisa Pathfinder? But we can only test the technologies that uh, she's going to test in space. Why is that? So what we're trying to do with Lisa Pathfinder is to put a body into free fall. Really what that means is there's no forces acting on it apart from gravity. Now, if we were sitting in the Earth, then Earth's gravity would actually wipe out what we're trying to measure. So we want to be outside so we can't even see the Earth or the Moon or any other forces. So the only way to do that is to go into space. And that's where we are headed now. You can see on the bottom left-hand side we're 600 and, uh, 264 kilometres high. Our distance in the middle is the distance from the pad. Let's find out a little bit more about Lisa Pathfinder. Before trying something new, you need to test the technology first, and that's exactly what Lisa Pathfinder will be, a technology demonstration mission. It will become the first gravitational laboratory in space for fundamental physics, and it will test the technologies that will be needed to detect and measure gravitational waves. Gravity is the fundamental force of the universe. Uh, at the, the, the largest scales of talking about stars, galaxies, the universe, they are dominated by gravity. So we have to actually look at the ripples in space-time. We have to look at the effect of gravity over all of space. Gravitational waves from an exploding star, for instance, travel across the universe almost unimpeded, unlike light, which gets absorbed by gas and dust. 
When they pass through the Earth, they produce minute changes in the size of our planet, but only by about a millionth of the size of an atom, making them extremely difficult to measure. This means ensuring that any detector is isolated or shielded from all other forces which could disturb the measurement. And if you want to investigate gravity, you need something to fall. So inside Lisa Pathfinder, there will be two small gold platinum cubes in freefall. The aim is to show that something can be built that is free of all forces, except gravity, and is sensitive enough to measure the tiniest of movements caused by the passage of a gravitational wave. A precision micro-propulsion system with tiny thrusters will keep the spacecraft in perfect position. This way, for instance, it can oppose any solar radiation force, protecting the cubes from the external noise of the solar system. When Lisa Pathfinder proves this innovative technology, the next step will be another, much bigger mission, involving up to three spacecraft separated by five million kilometers, with cubes in each one. Measuring the distance between them and the gravitational waves that produce any changes in that distance will open a new window to our gravitational universe. Uh, Lisa Pathfinder is a first for ESA in that it's a mission looking into a new uh, science uh, altogether, a new way of doing astronomy. And this new era in space science, first predicted by Albert Einstein almost 100 years ago, will change forever how we see the universe around us. What an incredible last image, Paul. Yeah, that's a black hole swallowing matter. Uh, just, that's what we're looking for. Unbelievable. Um, now, the cubes are going to be in free fall, but what are they going to be falling to? Where is down in space? Fin de visibilité nominale du lanceur par la station de Natal. So in space, there really isn't an up or a down, but what we can really say is we're falling towards the sun. We're in orbit around the sun, so we're actually the, our gravitational source. Now, we talked about general relativity Tous les paramètres briefly. Abord sont nominaux. Everything's going well. Um, as I said, it was 100 years ago that Einstein published his theory of relativity. What did he predict? So general relativity is a fantastic theory because not only did it was able to explain some measurements we'd already seen, some observations, it also predicted things for the future. Uh, so that it was able to explain why the orbit of Mercury continually changes, but then it was also able to predict the fact that light bends around the Sun, which was verified a few years later, and also something called gravitational redshift, which anyone who's watched the movie Interstellar will be familiar with, that when you go to a large, massive planet or a black hole, time slows down. Well, absolutely, and it's a great movie, and I've often wondered how, how true it was, so it just shows that it is. And um, we've been trying to work out exactly what a gravity wave is, so we gave Paul a bit of cloth, a cube, and a marble to explain. So here I have uh, my representation of the universe. So for everyday life, our universe is flat. We drive along the cars, we walk along the street, we have a flat universe. But then Einstein came along and he said, well, that's not quite true. The universe itself is actually like a fabric. And everything which is in the universe creates that fabric to change its shape. And I have here, this is a, a dummy of a Lisa Pathfinder test mass. So this is 46 millimetres on a side. It's made of tungsten, not gold platinum, but it weighs about two kilograms. So if I use this to represent my black hole, and I put my black hole into my universe, immediately see that space changes, space warps around the black hole. And I now have my marble, this is my little planet, or my other black hole, and I let it go round. You start to see that it orbits, and it orbits quite slowly, then it gets faster and faster and faster. And just before it gets to the bottom, if we do it again, if we look at the, the black hole, you see the black hole starts to oscillate. And it's this oscillation which then creates the ripples in space which are coming out through the universe, and these are the gravitational waves. And these are the things we're trying to measure with the future gravitational wave detectors, of which Lisa Pathfinder is the first step. Well, it certainly helps when you demonstrate it like that. Okay. But, but is this uh, the same force that makes us stick to Earth? It is the same gravitational force. Uh, another analogy we sometimes use is if you imagine a pond full of water and the water is the gravity. 
and I then drop a pebble into the pond, you see the little waves coming off, the ripples. And those ripples are like the gravitational waves. So yes, it is like the gravity on Earth, but we're looking for these little ripples sitting on top of the, the gravity. Now, there are some experiments already on Earth, aren't there? Although this is the first time we're going into space to look for gravitational waves. That's correct. Uh, we've actually been looking for gravitational waves on Earth from, since the 1960s. Yes, so we've been looking for gravitational waves since the 1960s, and the original detectors were very large bars of aluminium, and it acted like a bell. So when a gravitational wave passed over, the bell would ring, and we would look for small, these tiny changes in the size of the, the piece of aluminium. And that then evolved into using laser interferometers, again, measuring distance, but now doing it by lasers. And today we have several interferometers on the planet. Uh, there's two in America, which are four kilometers long, uh, one in Italy, which is three kilometres, one in Germany and one in Japan. And as a network, these detectors are really right on the, the edge of making the first gravitational wave detection. So this is exciting stuff. We're coming up to the next phase now in the, in the flight. The uh, cut-off of the de la Vum. Avum upper stage. It switched its engine off. You can see there we're at a speed of uh, 7.29 kilometres on the bottom right. And we're starting the orientation manoeuvres. Now, this is the first of two ballistic phases. Uh, Paul, what does ballistic mean? So a ballistic phase really just means there's no propulsion. So we're now just travelling at roughly the same speed we were when we cut the engine off. And our flight path takes us east along the equator. Uh, across Africa, Southeast Asia, the Pacific Ocean, and back here to South America. So we, we do a full lap of the Earth around the equator, and we're going to deliver Lisa Pathfinder quite literally over our heads at the CSG. Now, this uh, team received the information from the tracking stations as it flies over. It's called the CVI, or Real-Time Visual Control, and... They receive that information. It helps them to check how the flight is going in real time and they can analyse it afterwards to see how everything went and make improvements in the future if Bain necessary. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. Now, as we've seen, Lisa Pathfinder is made of and will be testing brand new technology. It's quite revolutionary stuff. It's never been done before. It was built by an expert group of European industries led by Airbus Defence and Space in the, Q in the UK. And it's no mean feat designing and building a trailblazing gravity hunter.